Well, and then finally, James Earl Jones just died at age 93. And any Star Wars fan like myself, the voice of Darth Vader? Yes. Or the coming to, the scene in Coming to coming America. Coming to America, the voice of Mustafa yes. and the Lion King. Phenomenal gentleman. Oh, man, you oh, ever met and, him? No, I never met him. I never met him either. But he yeah. has a... He has a um, Air about him of oh, yeah. like sophistication a regal kind of, yeah. and respect. So shout out to Earl, Mr. Earl Jones. Thank you for the memories on that one because when he came into a room, when you look at him and come into America, the voice to his 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 silhouette, his strength. Yes, he that was whoever cast that movie was phenomenal because that was perfect. No, man, he was a, he was a phenomenal, and I had heard, remember I read this a while back, that he had actually done a deal with Disney Mm -hmm. where they could continue to use his voice like after his passing for like a certain amount of money. And now with AI, you could, you could do that. Yes. Relatively easily. Yes. So you will still hear James Earl Jones as Darth Vader for decades to come. That's phenomenal. And I think that's dope. Oh my God. You know, so his family phenomenal. will probably benefit from that yes. as time goes on because, uh, you know, because I think I remember uh, a long time ago, the actor that played Darth Vader under the costume mm-hmm. trying to sue Disney and say that, like, it was like reverse racism and they didn't <laughs> use his voice. And I think George Lucas came in and said, okay, James Earl Jones has a legendary voice has nothing to do with his race yes you didn't know what you know darth vader looked like under that mask at that point early on and his voice absolutely made made that character and everyone who does that character always tries to mimic yes that voice yes but yeah but outside of uh darth vader yeah man just a ton of movies that go back to like the 70s the 70s yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Star Wars came out in '77. Yeah, yeah. He he talked about that. He only got seven thousand dollars for that part. Yeah, which but, is okay. He thought it was a lot of money. I mean, but back then, seven thousand was a lot of money. Seven thousand was a lot of money, and I remember even seeing a documentary about the making of Star Wars, like yes. Harrison Ford. Everyone thought the movie was a joke. Yes. No yeah. one thought it was. You know, they're like, you got this big Chewbacca guy with right. a giant teddy bear thing, and it, everyone thought it was just gonna flop. Mm-hmm. And it, it turned into a phenom. Yes, it did. You know, so, it yeah, made you get 7,000. very rich. Yeah, man. Made a lot of people very rich. Yes. You know, there's also Field of Dreams, The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games. He was phenomenal The Sandlot. Of course, The Lion King, like yes. we mentioned. Yes. He had a hell of a, you know, and look, 93, man, that's a good age to pass I was just away. telling somebody that. 93. Listen, if you can get it to you, don't get me wrong, death is death is going to hurt anyway. Yes. But if you can get past 88, baby, you and, and you're healthy and got a little bit of money, yeah. you did your thing. My dad died at 84. So I, I keep that in mind. I think, okay, if my dad lived that long, I'm 52, okay, I probably have- You can have, make it. I can make it. You can make it. I can make it. Yeah, you yeah. can make it. But because you l- use that as your as the guy. Yeah. As, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully with advanced, you know, medical technology, because he died from Parkinson's. Yes. Hopefully by the time I reach that age, there'll be technology and drugs. Yes. And, and, you, and, and your life is different because everything to me starts when you're young. Yeah. See, people start trying to get their lives together in their 40s or 50s. To me, that's me. I'm not a doctor. But from what I've seen, it's too late. Well, listen, and a lot of people get on me about this because I've mentioned this a couple times. When I order Postmates, I would say about a third of the time, the people who drop off my food are senior citizens. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with Postmates. No. There's nothing wrong with working a job. But I don't think anyone aspires in their 60s and 70s to have to drop off food to make ends meet. Yes. Nobody's doing this just for fun. I totally agree. If you're doing Postmates in retirement age, it means that the decisions you made up to that point are not supporting the lifestyle that you want. I totally agree. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But try to make decisions, financial decisions, 
where by the time you're ready to retire, you can maintain whatever lifestyle it is without having to get extra work. Because I know you don't want to get out of bed and jump in a car and go pick up someone's noodles and then go yeah. drive in and drop it off. That's true. And, and, and do that type of work. Now, it's cool to have hobbies and to have your own business that you still work on, you know, to be a, a Bill Gates who's yes. still running a whole bunch of companies and not retired. Yes. That's different than having to do a job that you don't care about because your Medicaid and whatever your retirement accounts are not covering and you can't pay your rent and you can't eat what you want to eat. So true, Vlad. Yeah, man. I'm with you 100%. A man yeah. told me a long time ago, David Klingman, he said, TK, you don't want to ever get old and be broke. Yes. I remember that. Too. He told me this 30-something, 40 years ago. Yeah. And I lived that way to this day. Now, I might die in, in, in whatever, but my goal is to make sure as I'm old, I'm not broke. That's where we're going to end it. T.K. Kirkland. My Always man. a pleasure. Always a Until pleasure. Until next Brian. time. Peace. Handle your handle.